In the long wake of Charles and Diana's heart-rending separation, the veils shrouding their turbulent union are slowly unfurling, revealing the hidden tragedies of their shared existence. From the revelation that Diana wasn't Charles's initial romantic choice to the harrowing conflicts simmering beneath their royal facade, long-guarded secrets now emerge into the harsh light of scrutiny. Maintain composure as you delve into the chilling depths of Charles and Diana's ill-fated marriage, where sorrow and discord lurk beneath the polished surface of royalty. In the vibrant and scrutinized social scene of the 1970s, Prince Charles, the heir to the British throne, was a figure of immense fascination. With his status and charm, he captured the attention of many as he navigated the complexities of courtship in the public eye. Among the various romantic encounters attributed to him during this era, one particularly intriguing liaison emerged. A fling with Lady Sarah Spencer, the sister of his future wife, Princess Diana. The spark between Prince Charles and Lady Sarah ignited in 1977, drawing the attention of tabloids and gossip columns alike. Their dalliance was the subject of speculation and intrigue, with rumors swirling about the nature of their relationship. Lady Sarah, possessing her own allure and charisma, was thrust into the spotlight alongside the Prince of Wales. However, amidst the swirling rumors and conjecture, Lady Sarah sought to dispel any notions of a romantic entanglement. In a notable interview with Time magazine the following year, she made clear that her relationship with Charles was purely platonic. There is no chance of me marrying him. I'm not in love with him, she affirmed, firmly quashing any notions of a royal romance. Despite the allure of Charles's status and position, Lady Sarah asserted her independence and emphasized the importance of genuine affection in matters of the heart. Indeed, Lady Sarah offered insights into the character of the prince, describing him as a romantic soul who easily succumbed to the allure of love. Despite their lack of romantic involvement, she spoke fondly of their friendship, highlighting Charles's ability to bring laughter and joy into her life. Charles makes me laugh a lot. I really enjoy being with him, she shared, painting a picture of camaraderie and shared moments of mirth. Princess Diana's perspective on the relationship between her sister, Lady Sarah Spencer, and Prince Charles offers a fascinating insight into the dynamics of their interactions during the 1970s. Transcribed audio tapes from 1991, later published by the Daily Mail, reveal Diana's candid reflections on the matter, shedding light on her observations and sentiments at the time. Diana's recollections paint a vivid picture of her sister's romantic involvement with the Prince of Wales. She vividly described Lady Sarah's pursuit of Charles, likening it to being all over him like a bad rash. The metaphor, though humorous, hints at the intensity of Lady Sarah's pursuit and suggests Diana's perception of her sister's eagerness to pursue the prince's affection. According to Diana's account, Lady Sarah's relationship with Charles lasted for nine months, a significant period that underscored the depth of their connection. Diana herself was a witness to their courtship, as she noted that the three of them frequently attended the same social events over the span of about two years. These shared social circles likely provided ample opportunity for Lady Sarah and Charles to nurture their relationship further intertwining their lives in the glamorous world of high society. Diana's narrative also unveils intriguing details about the dynamics between the Spencer sisters and Charles. She recounted an episode surrounding Charles' 30th birthday celebration in 1978, where both sisters were invited. Diana recalled her sister's apparent surprise and discomfort at her presence as Lady Sarah questioned why Diana was included in the festivities. This anecdote hints at underlying tensions or rivalries between the sisters, perhaps fueled by the complexities of their respective relationships with the prince. The timeline of events further illuminates the evolving dynamics within the trio. 
Lady Sarah's subsequent marriage to Neil McCorquadale in 1980 marked a significant turning point in her personal life, signaling the end of her romantic involvement with Charles. By 1981, as Charles and Diana announced their engagement, Lady Sarah humorously referred to herself as Cupid, boasting of her role in bringing the royal couple together. This playful assertion underscores Lady Sarah's acknowledgement of her past connection to Charles while embracing the happiness of her sister's impending marriage. The announcement of Prince Charles and Lady Diana Spencer's engagement on February 25, 1981, marked a significant moment not only for the royal family, but for the world at large. The stark age difference between the couple, with Diana being 19 and Charles 32 years old at the time, captured public attention and ignited a flurry of discussions surrounding their union. For Prince Charles, the decision to propose to Diana was not merely a matter of personal choice, but one influenced by the expectations placed upon him as heir to the British throne. The pressure to marry and produce an heir was palpable, driven by both his age and his royal status. In an interview with The Guardian, Charles candidly acknowledged the role Diana would play in his life, expressing his belief that she would keep me young. However, he also humorously anticipated the challenges ahead, jesting, I think I shall be exhausted. His remarks hinted at the gravity of his future responsibilities, as well as the anticipation of a vibrant partnership with his young bride-to-be. Diana, on the other hand, approached the engagement with a blend of pragmatism and optimism. In her interactions with the press, she exuded a sense of maturity beyond her years, addressing the concerns about their age gap with poise and confidence. She dismissed any reservations about their age difference, stating, it's only 12 years, and lots of people have got married with that sort of age difference. Her perspective reflected a belief in the fluidity of age and the importance of individual mindset in defining one's vitality and compatibility in a relationship. The engagement of Charles and Diana symbolized the fusion of tradition and modernity within the British monarchy. While adhering to centuries-old conventions of royal betrothals and dynastic continuity, their union also represented a departure from the past, characterized by more public and media-driven scrutiny of their personal lives. As the world eagerly awaited their wedding, the couple's love story captivated hearts and minds, offering a glimpse into the evolving dynamics of monarchy in the modern age. Prince Charles's sentiments of positively delighted and frankly amazed upon Lady Diana Spencer's acceptance of his proposal offer a glimpse into the profound emotions underlying their whirlwind romance. His words resonate with a sense of gratitude and incredulity, as if acknowledging the serendipity of finding a partner who was not only willing to join him on his royal journey, but also captured his heart in the process. Indeed, the courtship between Prince Charles and Princess Diana progressed with remarkable swiftness, defying the expectations of a prolonged search for a suitable royal bride. Despite years of speculation and scrutiny regarding Charles's romantic prospects, his relationship with Diana unfolded with unexpected rapidity. Their engagement, announced on February 25, 1981, set the stage for a fairy tale wedding that captured the imagination of the world. Sally Bedell Smith's inquiry into the motivations behind Charles's decision to marry Diana encapsulates the lingering curiosity surrounding their union. The 12-year age gap between them and the relatively brief duration of their courtship invite questions about the deeper motivations driving their relationship. Why did Charles choose Diana, a woman 12 years his junior and someone he had only known for a limited number of dates? However, delving deeper into their history unveils a connection that predates their formal courtship by several years. In November 1977, nearly four years before their engagement, Charles and Diana crossed paths for the first time. Despite being just 16 years old at the time, Diana made a lasting impression on the Prince of Wales. 
Their initial encounter, characterized by a platonic friendship, unfolded against the backdrop of Charles's relationship with Diana's older sister, Lady Sarah Spencer. The significance of their earlier acquaintance adds layers of complexity to their eventual romance. While their initial interactions may have been casual and devoid of romantic undertones, they laid the groundwork for a deeper connection that would blossom in the years to come. The presence of Ladi Sarah in their shared history adds a poignant dimension to their love story, hinting at the intricacies of familial ties and personal dynamics within the aristocratic circles they inhabited. The release of Andrew Morton's book, Diana, her True Story, in 1992, marked a watershed moment in the public's perception of Princess Diana and her marriage to Prince Charles. This revelatory account offered an unprecedented glimpse into the inner workings of the royal household, challenging the carefully curated image of marital bliss presented by the palace. When the book initially surfaced, Palace officials vehemently denied any suggestion that Diana had cooperated with Morton in its creation. The narrative presented in the book, however, painted a starkly different picture of Diana's reality, detailing her struggles with loneliness, isolation, and the emotional toll of her tumultuous marriage to the heir to the throne. For years, speculation swirled about the identity of Morton's elusive source, with Diana's involvement remaining a closely guarded secret. However, in the wake of Diana's tragic and untimely death in 1997, the truth finally came to light. Andrew Morton publicly admitted that Diana had indeed been his primary source of information, providing him with intimate details of her personal life and experiences. Her willingness to share intimate details of her personal life, struggles, and triumphs served as a courageous act of defiance against the stifling constraints of royal tradition and public scrutiny. The transcripts of Diana's audio tapes, unveiled in a series of articles published by the Daily Mail in 2017, offer a poignant glimpse into the innermost thoughts and emotions of the Princess of Wales. These recordings further immortalized in the documentary Diana in Her Own Words, provide a raw and unfiltered account of Diana's experiences, aspirations, and enduring legacy. Morton's account of Diana's gradual engagement with the book's creation process sheds light on the evolution of their collaboration. Diana's initial cautious approach, marked by the discreet transmission of information through mutual friend Dr. James Colthurst, underscores her shrewdness and strategic foresight. Over time, as trust between Diana and Morton deepened, she made the pivotal decision to cooperate fully for the book, despite the necessity of indirect communication due to the sensitive nature of their collaboration. The revelation that Diana entrusted Morton with personal letters purportedly exchanged between Prince Charles and his then-mistress Camilla Parker Bowles adds a layer of poignancy to their narrative. Diana's decision to share these intimate correspondences reflects her desire to expose the truth behind her tumultuous marriage and the emotional toll of Charles's infidelity. Despite initial skepticism and backlash against the book, fueled by perceptions of it being a pack of lies about Princess Diana, the truth eventually emerged. Diana's courageous act of speaking her truth resonated deeply with supporters around the world who identified with her struggles and empathized with her journey. The announcement of Princess Diana and Prince Charles's separation in 1992 marked a pivotal moment in the unraveling of their tumultuous marriage, setting the stage for a cascade of public revelations and personal struggles that would define their subsequent years. While the official declaration of their separation signaled a formal acknowledgement of the strains within their relationship, it was Princess Diana's candid and headline-making interview with Martin Bashir on Panorama in 1995 that thrust the breakdown of their marriage into the spotlight. In her iconic interview, Diana's response to questions about Charles's alleged affair with Camilla Parker Bowles reverberated around the world 
forever altering the public's perception of the royal union. Her now infamous remark, Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded, laid bare the emotional turmoil and betrayal she experienced as a result of Charles' extramarital relationship. However, the seeds of discord between Charles and Diana were sown long before their public separation. March 1981 witnessed a poignant moment captured on film as footage emerged of Princess Diana tearfully bidding farewell to Prince Charles at the airport. Initially interpreted as a display of affection and longing for her departing fiancé, Diana later revealed the true source of her anguish in transcribed recordings released by the Daily Mail. In a heartbreaking revelation, Diana disclosed that her tears on that fateful day were not prompted by Charles's departure, but by a phone call she received in his study just before he left. The caller was none other than Camilla Parker Bowles, a presence that loomed large over Diana's marriage from its earliest days. The emotional impact of this encounter, coupled with the realization of Charles's enduring connection to Camilla, shattered Diana's illusions of marital bliss and cast a shadow over their union. One of the most striking moments detailed by Diana is her recollection of overhearing Charles express his undying love for Camilla, stating, Whatever happens, I will always love you. This candid admission underscores the depth of Charles's attachment to Camilla, a bond that persisted despite the constraints of his marriage to Diana. Equally poignant is Diana's discovery of a personalized bracelet that Charles had purchased for Camilla shortly before their wedding. The timing of this gesture occurring just days before Charles and Diana exchanged vows serves as a poignant reminder of the clandestine nature of Charles's relationship with Camilla and the extent to which it overshadowed his commitment to Diana. Diana's emotional turmoil on her wedding day as she walked up the aisle searching for Camilla's presence, speaks volumes about the lingering specter of Charles's past romance. Despite the pageantry and celebration surrounding their nuptials, Diana's heartache and uncertainty loomed large, casting a shadow over what should have been a joyous occasion. Even during their honeymoon, Diana's dreams were haunted by thoughts of Camilla, further underscoring the pervasive influence of Charles' former lover on their marriage, the juxtaposition of marital bliss and emotional turmoil during this supposedly idyllic period highlights the profound impact of infidelity and betrayal on Diana's psyche. The tragic death of Princess Diana in August 1997 marked the end of a tumultuous chapter in royal history, but it also left lingering questions about the nature of her relationship with Charles and the role played by Camilla in their marital discord. Despite Diana's untimely passing, the legacy of her courage and resilience endures, forever immortalized in the hearts of millions around the world. In April 2005, Prince Charles finally married Camilla Parker Bowles, cementing their relationship in the eyes of the public. The union, long overshadowed by controversy and scandal, symbolized a new chapter in Charles's life, one marked by acceptance and reconciliation with his past. Princess Diana's candid interview with Martin Bashir in 1995 provided a rare glimpse into her private struggles and personal relationships, shedding light on the complexities of her life behind the royal facade. One of the most poignant revelations to emerge from the interview was Diana's discussion of her relationship with British Army officer James Hewitt, whose subsequent tell-all book, Love and War, thrust their affair into the spotlight. In her conversation with Bashir, Diana spoke of Hewitt as a great friend who provided crucial support during a particularly challenging period in her life. The princess's vulnerability and reliance on Hewitt underscored the loneliness and isolation she often experienced within the confines of the royal household. Despite the inherent risks of such a relationship, Diana entrusted Hewitt with her deepest confidences, only to be devastated by the betrayal of his subsequent tell-all publication. 
Diana's distress at Hewitt's betrayal was palpably as she lamented the breach of trust and the exploitation of her personal struggles for financial gain. The realization that a trusted friend had capitalized on their relationship for monetary profit added another layer of pain to Diana's already tumultuous life. The impact of Hewitt's actions extended beyond Diana herself, as she expressed concern for the potential repercussions on her children and their perception of her. When Bashir broached the subject of the nature of her relationship with Hewitt, Diana's response was both candid and poignant. She acknowledged that their connection had indeed transcended the boundaries of friendship, admitting, Yes, I adored him. Yes, I was in love with him. However, Diana also conveyed a profound sense of disappointment and betrayal, lamenting that she had been very let down by Hewitt's actions. The alleged affair between Princess Diana and her bodyguard, Barry Manneke, is a deeply poignant and controversial chapter in the princess's life, shrouded in mystery and speculation. The circumstances surrounding their relationship and Manneke's untimely death in a motorcycle accident in 1987 have fueled intense scrutiny and debate over the years. According to reports from The Mirror, rumors of an affair between Diana and Manneke first surfaced in 1985. Manneke, a member of the Royal Protection Squad assigned to safeguard Diana, reportedly formed a close bond with the princess during his tenure. Their relationship, if indeed romantic in nature, would have represented a significant breach of royal protocol and raised questions about Diana's emotional state and marital fidelity. In transcripts of recordings released by Andrew Morton in 2017, Diana cryptically alluded to an affair with security personnel, seemingly referencing Manneke without explicitly naming him. Describing the depth of her feelings, Diana reflected on her profound love for someone who worked within her security detail. She revealed the devastating impact of Manneke's departure from her life, lamenting that just three weeks after he left his post, he met a tragic end in a motorcycle accident. Diana's poignant recollection of Manneke as the greatest love I've ever had offers a rare glimpse into the depth of her emotions and the intensity of their connection. Despite the constraints of royal protocol and the risks associated with such a relationship, Diana's bond with Manneke transcended the boundaries of duty and convention, leaving an indelible mark on her heart. The circumstances surrounding Manneke's death have been the subject of speculation and conspiracy theories over the years, with some suggesting foul play or official cover-ups. While the official verdict attributed Manneke's death to a tragic accident, the shadow of suspicion and intrigue continues to linger, adding another layer of complexity to Diana's already tumultuous life. Princess Diana's candid revelations about her battle with bulimia during her marriage to Prince Charles offer a poignant and deeply personal insight into the emotional turmoil she experienced behind the facade of royal glamour. In her interview tapes for Andrew Morton's book, Diana bravely opened up about the onset of her eating disorder, tracing its roots back to the early days of her engagement to Charles. According to Diana's account, her struggle with bulimia began shortly after their engagement, triggered by hurtful remarks from her husband-to-be. She recalled a particularly painful incident when Charles commented on her weight, placing his hand on her waistline and remarking, Oh, a bit chubby here, aren't we? This callous remark, coupled with the emotional strain of Charles's ongoing relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles, served as catalysts for Diana's descent into the grip of her eating disorder. Diana's relentless pursuit of perfection in preparation for her wedding is underscored by her revelation that she had shrunk several inches in waist size between her first wedding dress fitting and the day of the ceremony. The pressure to conform to unrealistic standards of beauty and elegance, exacerbated by the intense scrutiny of the media and public, took a devastating toll on Diana's physical and emotional well-being.
Even during her pregnancies, Diana's battle with bulimia persisted, compounding the challenges of motherhood with the relentless grip of her eating disorder. She described her first pregnancy with Prince William as very, very difficult, plagued by sleepless nights, persistent morning sickness, and the debilitating effects of bulimia. Despite the joy of impending motherhood, Diana's struggles with her mental and physical health cast a shadow over what should have been a time of celebration and anticipation. Perhaps most heartbreaking of all is Diana's revelation that her husband, Prince Charles, confided in Queen Elizabeth II about her bulimia. Diana expressed her anguish at the Queen's reaction, recounting how the monarch attributed the breakdown of their marriage to Diana's eating disorder. The Queen's purported response reflects the pervasive stigma and misunderstanding surrounding mental health issues within the royal family and society at large. While neither Prince Charles nor Queen Elizabeth II publicly addressed Princess Diana's bulimia during her lifetime, the impact of her struggles reverberated through the generations. In a 2017 documentary about eating disorders, Prince William courageously spoke out about the importance of mental health awareness, declaring, mental health needs to be taken as seriously as physical health. The clandestine recording and subsequent leak of a 1989 telephone conversation between Princess Diana and her close friend, James Gilby, sparked a media firestorm and thrust the intimate details of their friendship into the public spotlight. The conversation, characterized by affectionate exchanges and candid discussions, became widely known as Squidgygate, owing to Gilby's repeated use of the pet name Squidgy to address Diana. According to reports from the Mirror, Gilby's endearments to Diana included more than 50 utterances of Darling and 14 instances of the nickname Squidgy, creating an atmosphere of familiarity and intimacy between the two friends. However, the leaked recording also contained potentially compromising content, including alleged references to Gilbey playing with himself, adding a salacious dimension to the scandal. In addition to their affectionate exchanges, Diana and Gilbey were reported to have blown kisses to each other during the conversation, further fueling speculation about the nature of their relationship. Against the backdrop of Diana's public struggles with her marriage to Prince Charles and her dissatisfaction with the royal family, the leaked recording provided fodder for tabloid speculation and sensationalism. During her 1995 interview with Martin Bashir on BBC's Panorama, Diana addressed the fallout from Squidgygate with characteristic candor and grace. She expressed her concern for Gilby's well-being, emphasizing his role as a supportive friend during a difficult period in her life. Diana adamantly denied any suggestion of an adulterous relationship with Gilby, attributing the implications of the leaked conversation to malicious intent aimed at tarnishing her reputation. In Diana's view, the leaked recording was part of a broader campaign to undermine her credibility and sway public opinion against her. She characterized her marriage to Prince Charles as a high-stakes game, likening it to a poker game or chess game in which strategic maneuvering and public perception played pivotal roles. The leaked transcript of a private phone conversation between Prince Charles and Camilla Parker Bowles which came to light not long after Charles and Princess Diana's separation, sent shockwaves through the public consciousness due to its graphic and unconventional content. The conversation, which occurred in 1989, provided a rare glimpse into the intimated dynamics of Charles and Camilla's relationship, replete with suggestive and eyebrow-raising exchanges. According to reports from the Mirror, Prince Charles appeared to make a particularly vivid remark, expressing a desire to live inside Camilla's trousers or something, to which Camilla responded with playful banter, jokingly suggesting that he might come back as a pair of knickers. The use of the word knickers, 
a British term for underwear, added a humorous and somewhat risque dimension to their conversation, setting the tone for the bizarre exchanges that followed. The conversation took an even more surreal turn as Charles mused about the possibility of reincarnation as a tampon, quipping, or God forbid a tampax. Just my luck. Camilla's enthusiastic response, deeming it a wonderful idea, only served to heighten the absurdity of their dialogue. The metaphorical discussion continued with Camilla imagining Charles as a box of tampax, humorously suggesting that he could just keep going in reference to the disposable nature of feminine hygiene products. The leaked conversation, subsequently dubbed Tampon Gate or Camilla Gate by the media, captured the public imagination and became a source of widespread fascination and amusement. The surreal nature of the exchanges, coupled with the incongruity of such intimate discussions involving members of the royal family, added an element of scandal and intrigue to the unfolding drama. The leaked transcript also made an impact beyond the realm of tabloid sensationalism, influencing the portrayal of Prince Charles in popular culture. Josh O'Connor, who portrays Charles in the hit series, The Crone, expressed his reluctance to depict the infamous phone call, recognizing its potentially controversial and distasteful nature. In the deeply revealing taped interview Princess Diana granted to Andrew Morton in 1991, she laid bare the painful realities of her tumultuous marriage to Prince Charles. The raw honesty of her admissions offered a stark glimpse into the emotional turmoil she endured behind palace walls. The revelation that Princess Diana resorted to harming herself in an attempt to gain her husband's attention is profoundly poignant. Her confession that she threw herself downstairs while four months pregnant with Prince William speaks volumes about the depths of her despair and the desperation for validation and understanding from her spouse. It's a chilling testament to the isolation and anguish she felt within the confines of her royal marriage. The image of Princess Diana, a woman revered by millions around the world, resorting to such drastic measures to be heard, is heartbreaking. Her assertion that Prince Charles dismissed her cries for help as mere attention-seeking, labeling her as a crying wolf, underscores the profound disconnect in their relationship. The fact that she felt compelled to escalate to such extreme measures to elicit a response speaks volumes about the emotional neglect she endured. The Queen's reaction to the incident, described as one of horror and fear, underscores the gravity of Princess Diana's actions and the ripple effect they had within the royal family. It serves as a stark reminder of the human toll exacted by the pressures and expectations inherent in royal life. Moreover, Princess Diana's admission that she attempted self-harm multiple times throughout the marriage casts a stark light on the depth of her anguish and the absence of meaningful support. Her desperation to communicate with Charles, to be heard and understood, paints a portrait of a woman struggling to navigate the complexities of her royal role while battling her own inner demons. Andrew Morton's account of Princess Diana's revelations provid is a rara glimpse into the private struggles of a woman thrust into the spotlight of royalty. It humanizes her in a way that transcends her iconic status reminding us that behind the glamorous façade lay a woman grappling with profound pain and vulnerability. Princess Diana's journey from obscurity to global iconhood is a tale of profound transformation. As a shy and relatively unknown teenager, she entered the orbit of Prince Charles, stepping unwittingly into the spotlight of royalty. Almost overnight, Diana found herself thrust into the glare of relentless media attention, her every move scrutinized by millions around the world. The once unassuming young woman became an emblem of grace and glamour, her image gracing the covers of magazines and newspapers worldwide. Diana's effortless charm and genuine warmth endeared her to the public, earning her the endearing moniker, The People's Princess. 
Her innate ability to connect with people, whether through her charitable endeavors or her magnetic presence at public engagements, set her apart from the traditional aloofness of the royal family. She possessed a rare gift for empathy, effortlessly bridging the gap between royalty and the common folk. In the eyes of the adoring public, Diana underwent a remarkable metamorphosis, evolving into an epitome of elegance and beauty. Lady Elizabeth Anson, a cousin of Queen Elizabeth II, astutely observed that Charles couldn't help but notice Diana's transformation. From her demure beginnings to her emergence as a radiant blonde beauty, Diana captivated hearts and minds with her ethereal allure. Paul Burrell, Princess Diana's trusted butler, offered a poignant insight into the dynamics of her marriage to Prince Charles during an appearance on the Fatal Voyage podcast. He recounted how, amidst their global engagements, crowds clamored for a glimpse of Diana, chanting her name with fervor. Yet, upon returning from such events, Charles would reportedly seethe with jealousy. Burrell alleged that Charles would confront Diana, questioning why the public's adoration was directed towards her rather than him, the heir to the throne. In a bitter tone, he would remind her of her non-royal origins, suggesting that it was he who had bestowed royal status upon her, not birthright. Such revelations shed light on the simmering tensions beneath the surface of their seemingly regal union. Further insights into the dynamics of their relationship were unveiled by Princess Diana's former press secretary, Patrick Jeffson, during an episode of ITV's Inside the Crown, Secrets of the Royals. Jeffson suggested that Diana took pleasure in overshadowing her husband, relishing in the knowledge that her popularity grated on him. He noted that her infectious laughter and radiant smile weren't merely indicators of joy, but strategic tools wielded to undermine Charles's authority and provoke his envy. This revelation paints a complex portrait of Diana, portraying her as both a victim of circumstance and a shrewd player in the royal game of power and perception. Decades after her untimely demise, Princess Diana's enduring popularity remains undiminished. Her ability to captivate hearts and minds, both during her lifetime and in the years since her tragic passing, is a testament to her timeless appeal and the indelible mark she left on the world stage. The intricacies of Princess Diana and Prince Charles's tumultuous relationship unveiled yet another layer of complexity, with Diana's revelation during her 1995 Panorama interview with Martin Bashir. Despite the public spectacle of their marital discord and eventual separation, Diana confided that divorce was not her desired outcome. In a candid moment of vulnerability, she reflected on the profound impact of her own upbringing, marked by the divorce of her parents, and acknowledged the deep-rooted desire to defy the patterns of familial discord. For Diana, the prospect of divorce represented a painful echo of her past, a stark reminder of the fractured relationships she witnessed in her formative years. Drawing upon her own experiences, she expressed a steadfast determination to defy the odds and salvage her marriage, driven by a poignant desire to create a stable and loving family unit for her children. Her admission that she desperately wanted it to work underscores the depth of her commitment and the emotional investment she placed in her relationship with Prince Charles. Despite the public scrutiny and personal anguish, Diana clung to the hope that she and Charles could overcome their differences and forge a harmonious partnership. In her eyes, they were more than just a royal couple. They were a formidable team capable of weathering any storm. The release of Andrew Morton's revelatory book marked a turning point in Princess Diana and Prince Charles's tumultuous relationship. Faced with the damning revelations laid bare in its pages, the couple found themselves at a crossroads, forced to confront the harsh realities of their fractured marriage. With their legal teams assembled, they embarked on the painful process of negotiating a separation, a decision fraught with anguish and uncertainty.
Diana's admission to Martin Bashir during her Panorama interview offered a glimpse into the inner turmoil she grappled with during this tumultuous period. Despite her deep-seated sadness at the prospect of separation, she found herself compelled to support her husband's decision, acutely aware of the specter of divorce looming over her. Drawing upon the scars of her own past, marked by the divorce of her parents, Diana harbored a profound aversion to repeating the cycle of familial discord. In the wake of their decision to separate, Diana maintained a fragile facade of hope clinging to the belief that reconciliation might still be possible. Despite the speculation swirling around them, she insisted that divorce had not yet been broached. A poignant testament to the complexity of their relationship and the fragile balance they sought to maintain. However, the reality of their situation soon became undeniable. Following the broadcast of Diana's candid interview, Queen Elizabeth II perhaps recognizing the inevitability of their estrangement, reportedly extended a letter to Diana, tacitly encouraging her to pursue a divorce. This symbolic gesture underscored the gravity of their circumstances and the profound impact their marital discord had on the wider royal family. What do you think about the mysteries of Diana and Charles's marriage? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.